Greetings and welcome to Quieting Title and Adverse Claims, Actions to Remove Clouds on Title from American Jurisprudence. Let's get right down to it. And anyone in the room, please hit the like and give a heads up in the chat to know that we're coming through loud and clear. All right, let's get down to it. So this is from the May 2022 update from American Jurisprudence, second edition. So our summary here, the scope of this article discusses the determination of adverse claims to real and personal property by quiet title suits and actions to remove clouds on title. It discusses the nature and historical development of quiet title suits, matters and conditions affecting the right to maintain the suit, the nature of complainant's required title or possession, and particular estates and persons subject to the suit as well as defenses. Modes of obtainable relief are considered as are matters affecting practices and procedures relevant to quiet title suits. So the federal aspects of this article discusses the Quiet Title Act, which governs the procedure for quieting title to land in which the United States claims an interest. It also briefly discusses other federal statutes that control when the United States may be a party to an action to quiet title to land in which it holds a lien or mortgage, and this is from uh, 28 U.S.C., and the venue of and jurisdiction over quiet title actions involving the United States. So if we read carefully here, the United States may be it may be made a party to an action to quiet title to land in which it holds a lien or mortgage. Okay, let's continue. Treat it elsewhere. Abatement of quiet title action due to pendency of prior action concerning same property. Okay, so we're not going to be reading any of these, like adverse possession, boundary disputes, dead man's statute. Declaratory judgment is obtainable. These are all in different uh, editions here of uh, American jurisprudence, which we might check at a later date. All right, let's get to our first section. Definition and nature of quiet title action. In a quiet title action, the plaintiff asks the court to declare that he or she has good title to the property in question and compels any adverse complainant to prove a competing ownership claim or forever be barred from asserting it. All right, looks like we got some people in the room here. Let me see, is everything coming through loud and clear with pay attention? Great. And Chris, greetings and welcome. Just give me a heads up if we know everything is coming through loud and clear out there. And we're going to continue on with the reading. So we're asking the court to declare he or she has good title to the property in question and compels any adverse claimant to prove a competing ownership claim or forever be barred from asserting it. That's powerful. In other words... A quiet title action requests a judicial determination of all adverse claims to disputed property. Such an action determines the ownership or allocation of real property as between the parties and provides resolution of a dispute relating to adverse or conflicting claims to real property. It is thus brought to quiet an existing title against an adverse or hostile claim of another, and it is an appropriate means to determine 
the respective estates, titles, and interests of multiple people claiming an interest in land. The purpose of a quiet title action is to finally settle and determine, as between the parties, all conflicting claims to the property in the controversy, and to decree to each party such interest or estate therein as he or she may be entitled to, but it is not to invest the court with jurisdiction to sell or dispose of title to the land. It has also been stated that the purpose of a quiet title statute has been set forth as being to free the land of the cloud resting upon it and make its title clear and indisputable so that it may enter the channels of commerce and trade unfettered and without the handicap of suspicion. Quiet title actions are also intended to allow holders of the feeblest equitable interests to the right to remove from their way to legal title any unlawful hindrance having the appearance of a better right. The action is based on the premise that a person with good title to certain real or personal property should not be subjected to various future claims against that title. Observation. A quiet title action is not a defense to third-party claims, it, but provides a basis for affirmative relief. So let's see what we got here on the footnotes of this. Let's see. Oh, just the, the cases. All right. Let's move along here. All right. Thanks for the feedback there. We're coming through loud and clear. Appreciate it. All right. So we're on to quiet title actions distinguished from other actions. A suit to quiet title is an equitable action that involves clearing a title of an invalid charge against the title, while a trespass to try title action is the method of determining title to lands. Under either action, an owner sues to recover immediate possession of land unlawfully withheld. When one claims to have acquired title by adverse possession, and another disputes the claim, the ensuing litigation may take the form of either an ejectment action or a quiet title action. To determine whether a particular plaintiff is bringing an ejectment action or a quiet title action, it, is, it generally is necessary to know whether the plaintiff is in possession of the disputed land. A common law quiet title action requires proof that the plaintiff is in possession while an ejectment action requires proof that the complainant is legally being kept from possession, illegally being kept from possession, by bringing a suit to remove a cloud on title. A plaintiff is not demanding possession of the land, but is merely stating that the defendant has no right, title, or interest adverse to the plaintiff's interest purpose of an ejectment, ejectment action, as opposed to quiet title, is not to determine the relative and respective rights of all the potential title holder, holders, but rather the immediate rights between the plaintiff and the defendant involved in that particular litigation. So the ejectment action is not necessarily about the rights of title holders, but the immediate rights between the plaintiff and the defendant involved in that particular litigation of the title holder. The plaintiff claiming ownership of disputed property is not required to bring an action for ejectment, but can seek a declaration of who owns the disputed property in an action to quiet title and or remove a cloud from her title where the ejectment statute is written in permissive, not mandatory terms. Ooh. So we got to look at these uh, statutes here. Statutes, caution. Statutes in some jurisdictions create an action to determine adverse claims that is a substitute 
for both quiet title and ejectment and allow an action to quiet title even if the plaintiff is not in possession. Ooh, what state is that? That's number 11. Let's look at that real quick. Oh, great. Section 35. Well, we'll check that later. So before we uh, proceed, just want to remind everyone that we have these great little cautionary tips here and such. Uh, this is not to be interpreted as legal lawful information. This is an entertainment educational broadcast only and not to be used for professional, personal, or otherwise le uh, legal reasons. Don't do this at home. Uh, let's continue. A forcible detainer action is not exclusive but cumulative of any other remedy a party may have in the courts, and a displaced party may bring a separate suit to determine the question of title. So that's a forcible detainer action. So this is a cumulative action of any other remedy a party may have in the courts, and a displaced party may bring a separate suit to determine the question of the title. Number 12 and 2008. Interesting. Reynolds versus Wells Fargo Bank. So we have quiet title action, which is an equitable action for which damages are not available, or may sue for slander of title, a tort action for which damages may be recovered. Partition of property may be appropriate when the ownership of the property is not at issue. Moreover, disputes concerning ownership or ownership of or right of access to land are classic candidates for resolution via declaratory judgment, where possession of the property does not eliminate the possessor's need for direction to resolve the ongoing conflict between the parties over the defendant's re-entry rights to the property. So... There are some complex issues that do fall into this here. Partitions. All right, let's continue on to section three. All right. Welcome, uh, Mom Duke. Glad to have you all along. And let's continue. Applicability of quiet title actions to boundary disputes. It has been held that a dispute in which each owner admits the right, the, admits the title of the other. Let me read this again. It has been held that a dispute in which each owner admits the title of the other, but disagrees as to the physical location of the boundary, is a boundary dispute, rather than a title controversy, and that therefore such a dispute should not be brought as a quiet title action but an action in ejectment. However, it has also been held that a boundary line dispute may be properly commenced as a quiet title claim. A boundary determination necessarily involves the question of title and may be governed by a state's trespass to try title statute. Caution! An action to establish boundaries is properly treated as one seeking to quiet title if a title controversy exists. Indeed, if title to real estate is at issue rather than simply the location on the ground of a boundary, a suit for quiet title is the appropriate remedy instead of ejectment. So when we're talking real estate, we're talking commerce. All right, as to a settlement of a boundary dispute by an action to quiet title, Boundaries. Okay, nice. All right, we're on to the next section. Section 4. Equity, Jurisdiction to Quiet Title. Jurisdiction to Grant Relief by Way of Quieting of Title or Removal of Cloud from Title is inherent in a court that exercises equity powers like a chancery court, I would assume. However, although a court acting in equity may quiet title to real property in an individual who is the rightful legal and equitable owner, the facts must support 
that equitable remedy. Moreover, equity jurisdiction of an action to quiet title is not to be tested solely upon the plaintiff's possession. It also depends to some extent upon the ability of a court of law under the circumstances of the case to give complete relief. Hmm. And that's under footnote three, and that's as to lack of an adequate remedy at law as a prerequisite to such actions. See section 28. Hmm. Let's see, we're on section four. Let's take a, a brief digression to section 28 and see what they're talking about there. Uh, let's see, where are we? Six. They move pretty quick, but there's a lot of scrolling here. Let's see. Uh, okay. 28. Lack of an adequate legal remedy as a basis for equitable jurisdiction over quiet title action. So this is an important thing to have standing in a case. So let's read this. A bill to remove a cloud on title is traditionally a suit in equity and, as such, available only if there is no adequate remedy at law. Despite the merger of law and equity, this basic principle of jurisprudence retains its viability as a safeguard for the right to a jury trial guaranteed by the United States Constitution. Thus, if the complainant in a quiet title action is shown to have an adequate remedy by an action at law, the court will deny relief in the form of a decree quieting title or removing a clouded title. For example, equitable relief will be denied if the complainant has an adequate remedy by action of ejectment or trespass. However, it has also been held that an allegation that the legal remedy is adequate is not a defense to a statutory quiet title action. Hmm. So, it's statutory. So, that's under footnote 6. All right, so we just got cases there. All right, let's get back to where we were. What was the section just before this one, too? Grounds for equitable jurisdiction over quiet title. So let's read this one really quick because this applies as well. Equity will not entertain jurisdiction in actions to quiet title if there is a complete and adequate remedy at law. There is no danger from delay and no other ingredient that requires the powers of equity to prevent fraud or injustice. The allegation of a cloud on title and a petition for equitable relief do not, per se, create a cause that is necessarily within the court of equity. Okay. The proper form for the determination of land title disputes is not the Chancery Court, but the court of law. Wow, interesting here. So, this is very telling for what we were just reading there. And let me see if any of this other stuff ties in as we're backtracking here to where we were. All right, we can get back and then uh, see if we rejoin here because these seem like they're getting into... Yeah. So we see the difference here when they don't have a uh, remedy in law, a uh, remedy, I'm sorry, within this uh, quiet title. Uh, the equitable actions, then it has to be a remedy in law that, or else you won't have standing if there's a remedy in law in this uh, situation here. Okay, let's see here. No way, we go way back here. Okay, bear with me one moment. Let's see, section four. All right, so this is where we just left off here with the jurors. Uh, equity jurisdiction, a quiet title. So jurisdiction to grant relief by way of quieting title or removal of cloud from title is inherent in a court that exercises equity powers. 
However, although a court acting in equity may quiet title to real property in an individual who is the rightful legal equitable owner, the facts must support that equitable remedy. Moreover, equity jurisdiction of an action to quiet title is not to be tested solely upon the plaintiff's possession. It also depends, to some extent, upon the ability of the court of law under the circumstances of the case to give complete relief. So now we got it down pretty well. We can continue. Section 5. Nature of quiet title action as in rem or quasi in rem. Hmm. So on the property here, this is going to be interesting. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up, please do. So we make sure uh, the algorithm knows to get this out to as many people as possible that would find it useful. It has been held that suits to quiet title are not technically suits in rem, nor are they, strictly speaking, in personam. They are quasi in rem. Ooh. Because they are against the person in respect of the res. However, it has also been held simply that such actions are in rem. Other courts have more generally stated that such actions to clear clouds on title are in rem or quasi in rem. Oh gosh. As jurisdiction and venue over quiet title actions, see sections 58 and 59, and come on, no tips on that one? Oh, they're going to leave us at that, huh? So this is these are precautions here. It's been held, it has been held, that suits to quiet title are not technically suits in rem, nor are they, strictly speaking, in personam. They are quasi in rem. Whew. However, so you have caveat, it has also been held that simply that such actions are in rem. Hmm. And some say the clear clouds are in rem or quasi in rem. So there's either in rem or quasi in rem, but technically they're not in rem over the property, right? The jurisdiction. So uh, section six, nature of quiet title action as legal or equitable. So let's look at the nature of this so we get an even better idea. It is generally considered that a suit to quiet title is an equitable proceeding, or that is both statutory and equitable. However, it has also been held that a quiet title action is an action at law, as we've just seen. All right, we have someone new in here. Welcome, Chops, Chopostatic TV. Seems the notifications were out pretty thin today, so I appreciate everyone that's here today. And any questions, just throw them in the chat. I'm trying to monitor that as well as we go through the text. Also, it has been held that whether a statutory proceeding to quiet title or determine adverse claims is an action at law or a suit in equity is determined by the nature of the pleadings, the issues, and the relief sought. For example, where quiet title petition is in conventional form and the petitioner does not seek any affirmative equitable relief, but only a determination of the existing title as between the litigants, then it is an action at law. The action may also be at law when the parties seek only a determination of title and there is no specific request for equitable relief. In at least one jurisdiction, while an action to quiet title usually rests in equity, an action to determine title to real property is an action at law. Thus, an action to quiet title to real property, primarily involving the determination of title to real property based on adverse possession, may be an action at law. Furthermore, when the defendant's answer raises an issue of paramount title to land, such as would, if established, defeat the plaintiff's action, the issue of title is legal. Oh, gosh. So we have uh, 
if the answer raises an issue of paramount title to land to defeat the plaintiff's action. So process, yes, yeah, so this would be a legal, a legal issue. Wow. Moreover, if the plaintiff in an action to quiet title is in possession and no claim is made that he or she has ousted the defendant of possession, the action is equitable. But if the defendant alleges that he or she was recently ousted of possession of the property involved, the action is one at law. <laughs> Thus, a quiet title action that is normally equitable becomes a legal action when it takes on the character of an ejectment proceeding. An example, when the issue is the right to recover possession lost by recent ouster. The possession exception to the equitable nature of a quiet title action is premised on the fact that such an action is, in part, in a case involving real property, an action for ejectment, which is legal in nature. So the ejectment, legal, and quiet title typically is equitable. as the applicability of equitable defenses in the proceedings. So this would be an interesting one to see to 45 to 49, but let's see what we got next here. Statutory provisions governing quiet title actions generally. In many states, a suit to quiet title is a statutory action. Statutes may enlarge the power of the court to determine adverse claims to land and to quiet the title, even in cases in which, by the strict rules of a court of equity, suit is not maintainable. The action to determine adverse claims created by some such statutes is a substitute for both the equitable action to quiet title and the common law action of ejectment and offers broader and more comprehensive remedies than either of those actions. So that's interesting there. The statutory are to enlarge those uh, powers of the court. Statutes enlarging traditional quiet title actions are intended to afford an easy, fast, and efficient way to quiet title to real estate and to make title to land clear and indisputable so that it may enter the channels of commerce and trade without the handicap of suspicion. Because such statutes are remedial, they should be liberally construed and held to embrace any case coming fairly within their scopes. Hmm. A claim under a statute enlarging the traditional quiet title action has been held to be a statutory action in the nature of an equitable action, a special statutory action, or both statutory and equitable. So it could be a in the nature of an equitable action, a special statutory action, or both statutory and equitable. All right, let's see what else we got here. Distinction between ejectment and quiet title, which we saw already, section two. Nature, yes, saw that, section six. Effect of statutory provisions on common law quiet title actions. A statutory quiet title action may not necessarily exclude the use of other actions provided by law to establish or quiet title to property. In some jurisdictions, statutory remedies for the removal of clouds on title are not exclusive and do not preclude a resort to equity for relief or preclude any other remedy or form of action provided by law for quieting title. Such statutes supplement rather than supplant the traditional procedure. A long-standing common law predating the quiet title statute provides an independent, equitable basis for quieting title. Nice. Supplement rather than supplement rather than supplant the statutes do. 
as we heard before, enlarging the powers of the court through statutes. Okay, so why to constitutional limitation quieted and determined? In the absence, sorry, the absence in a quiet title statute of a requirement of the appointment of a guardian ad litem to represent the interests of unknown defendants does not make the statute unconstitutional as a violation of due process requirements. Hmm. All right. Section 10, property involved or affected by quiet title act. Of course, we should know this. It has been held that the remedy of quieting title or removing cloud from the title relates only to real property. Thus, title to personal property is not a proper subject of adjudication in this form of proceeding. However, it has been held or stated that a quiet title action may be used by persons claiming title to personal property, such as money, especially if an adequate legal remedy is shown to be lacking. Hmm. It's pretty interesting to think about there, because real property, well, I guess real estate, real property, I was under the impression it was a commercial term, but I digress. Let's continue here. Particular property interests as subjects of quiet title actions for Section 11. Oh, nice. As... An interest in land, an easement, is a proper subject of a suit to quiet title. And thus, claims for right-of-way or easement are normally considered quiet title actions. Similarly, a suit to remove a cloud or quiet title may be pursued with regard to title to minerals, standing timber, or water rights. Nice. All right, and this 11, or is that 11? Yep, all right, and so we're on a 12. Quiet title action as proceeding involving cloud on title, generally. The principal issue in a suit to quiet title is to the existence of a cloud on title that equity will remove. To establish a prima facie case for removing a cloud on title, a plaintiff must own the land in controversy or have some estate or interest in it, and the defendant must assert some claim in the land that is adverse to the plaintiff's title, estate, or interest. What constitutes cloud on title? Adverse claims and encumbrances. The cloud on title may be defined as semblance of title, either legal or equitable, appearing in some legal form, but that is, in fact, unfounded, or which it would be inequitable to enforce. Another one is an outstanding instrument, record, claim, or encumbrance that is actually invalid or inoperative, but may nevertheless impair the title to the property. And cloud could also be an apparent defect in the title that has the tendency, even in a slight degree, to cast doubt upon the owner's title and to stand in the way of the full and free exercise of his or her ownership. Cloud on title on real property may be created by anything that may be a mon uh, monument of title or constitute an encumbrance. Statutes for providing the determination of adverse interests and claims generally embrace every claim through a plaintiff through which a plaintiff may be deprived of his or her property through which its value may be depreciated. If a lawsuit is necessary to, to determine the title to a partial of property, there is clearly a cloud on the title to that property. So, yeah, this is a response to adverse possession claims, perhaps. Any kind of encumbrance, colors of title. Some of the more common records and instruments that may constitute a cloud on title are deeds, leases, mortgages, deeds of trust, contracts, options, judgments, or decrees, tax and assessment proceedings, 
restrictive covenants, or unfounded claims of easement. However, a notice of violation of a housing code that does not prevent the property owners from mortgaging or alienating their property is not a proper subject of a quiet title action. A cloud on title may be created by a mechanics lien that has attached to an excessive amount of property or by a junior lien when the junior lien holder was not made party to the senior lien holders judicial foreclosure action. Hmm. A removable cloud may also be created by a claim to the estate of a descendant such as by the setting up of a pretend will or right of inheritance. As to the cloud created by possible future claims by unknown heirs, the relative one who dies intestate may bring a quiet title action alleging that they are the fee simple owners of realty owned by the descendant at death because until the land records are amended to reflect the relative's ownership, their right to enjoyment of the property is in danger by the possibilities that others in the future might claim to be unknown heirs of the descendant. Wow. Nice little piece there. That's footnote 20. All right, there it is, another footnote of a case. So we're on to section 14, parole assertion of right in property as clouded title, effect of written or factual basis for claim. So this is going to be our parole assertion. Generally, a mere verbal or parole assertion of ownership of or as an interest in property does not give rise to a cloud removable by a suit to quiet title. Equity will not take jurisdiction to remove a merely verbal assertion of ownership as a cloud on title. And a bill to quiet title applies only to instruments or other proceedings in writing that appear of record and it casts doubt upon the validity of the record title. However, an exception to the requirements of a writing of record exists in a case of an interest in land or an apparent interest therein arising by operation of law, such as a case of land descending by intestacy. Also, a claim of right based upon prescription or adverse possession may constitute a removable cloud on title. So, intestacy is pretty sure it's dying without a will. All right. Nice. Instruments, claims, or proceedings by or against strangers. <laughs> That's cloud on title. This is going to be interesting. It has been held that a removable cloud on title may be created by a deed or other instrument that is executed by a stranger. I think you had a little hiccup there in the stream, but I think we're back. So, uh, let's read these. Various circumstances that may have an effect in the determination of this question, such as the inclusion of the property in a question in a conveyance of adjoining land between the grantor, belonging to the grantor, or ownership by the grantor of some estate or interest, although less than that which the deed purports to convey. So, yeah, this is some strange stuff there that you could run into with clouds of title. And I think we're detailing a lot of them here. Let's see what else we're getting into here. Threatened clouds on title, apprehended. Let's just see the title. So I want to get to section 45. This looks interesting here. If a tax assessment or proceeding would cast a cloud on title, the court may act to prevent the threatened injury. Thus, where the tax records of a county are mutilated, ineligible, cannot be verified, and constitute a cloud on the plaintiff's title, the court will allow the plaintiff to prove tax payments using his or her own records in order to quiet the title. The court may also enjoin the execution of a deed as an incident of an illegal tax sale. Wow. Caution, the intervention of the court may not be invoked if the taxing officers appear to be acting pursuant to legal authority 
and the proceedings are not shown to be illegal or invalid. Even if a complainant alleges that tax money is used for an unlawful purpose, it would not follow that such assessments, when lawfully made, were a cloud upon title to land. Wow, that's... that's <laughs> Footnote 6. That's a stretch. Teen illegality as clouding title. Forgery, fraud, or unconstitutionality. Uh, see, complaint petitioner declaration to quiet title to cancel forged authorization to sell property. Wow. If some form of illegality renders an instrument invalid, that instrument is a cloud upon the title of the property it affects. Conventional quiet title is employed to quiet title as against any forged or other iniquitous deed or other writing, which though not enforced at the time, either casts a cloud over the plaintiff's title, complainant's title, or otherwise subjects the complainant to future liability or present annoyance, and the cancellation of which is necessary to his or her perfect protection. A forged deed may be cancelled in equity as a cloud on the title of the true owner, even if it is regular and valid on its face, and has been recorded. Also, if a mineral deed is a forgery, then it is a nullity, and the owner of the land can maintain an action to remove it as a cloud upon his or her title. Practice tip. Relief by way of cancellation of an instrument is not necessarily confined to a party to the instrument. In a proper case, relief may be obtained even by a stranger to the transaction if his or her legal or equitable rights are affected. Wow. Pretty far reaching. That's a footnote five, that's say. Okay. A title or lien that has been procured by fraud, deceit, or misrepresentation casts upon the property a cloud that may be removed by a suit to quiet title. So here we have an observation. Even when a claim to determine interest in land seeks the cancellation or rescission of a written instrument on the grounds of fraud and undue influence, the action remains one to quiet title, and the alleged fraud and undue influence are merely incidental and not determinative. No, and not determinative of the nature of the action for limitations purposes. While there is an authority to the contrary, it has been held that a tax or assessment proceeding that is invalid because it is based on unconstitutional statute or ordinance, does I think we're back. Is anyone still here? <laughs> Jeez. Whew. Yeah, I guess we're uh, sensitive content here. But uh, I guess we're moving ahead. That was really strange. Okay, uh, give me a second here to get back online. Uh, yeah. And a pro yeah, good idea. I would definitely uh, agree with that one. Okay, assuming I'm not just talking to nothing, that we're all back and still here, let's continue. So let's see here. I want to get to section 45, so I wanted to go over really quick and see if there's anything good in this section here that we need to go over.
Okay, almost there. Trying to get to section 45. Property by agent or tenant, nice vendors as claimants. Wow, mortgagers and mortgages transfers as claimants. A mortgagor may bring a quiet title action alleging superior title as against purchasers at a defective foreclosure sale voidable at the mortgagor's election. However, a mortgagor in possession may not maintain an action against a mortgagee to quiet title even if the debt is unforeseeable because of the statute of limitations. This rule also applies to a mortgagor's transferee, trans, transferee if the mortgagor's transferee took title before the statute of limitations expired or if there is a privity relationship between the mortgagor and transferee. At some point, however, a transferee of property is so removed from the original debtor that there is no good reason to disallow the remote taker from quieting title despite the existence of an unpaid, though unenforceable, mortgage. That's interesting there. Section 41, Mortgagors and Mortgagors' Transferees as Claimants. In quiet title actions. So these are equitable actions typically, right? Nation Star Mortgage 2020. And that's in footnote one. Voidable at the mortgager's election. However, may not maintain action to quiet title. Even if the debt is unenforceable. Because of the statute. I get it. Okay. Unforeseeable. Unenforceable. So, yeah, typically a. Uh, I don't maintain action against a mortgagee to quiet title. Ah, okay. Even if it is unenforceable because of the statute. So, yeah, I see here. This looks like a really good case here. Number four is. 1981, 81, so these are all California Recorder, okay. Nice. Right, let's get to 45. Which one is this? All right, we're on to 45, finally. All right, defenses to quiet title actions generally. A defendant in a quiet title action can only assert its own title. And if the defendant does not make a claim to title, there is no dispute to adjudicate. A defendant may raise equitable as well as legal defenses. A new title acquired during the pendency of an, eject of an ejectment action may be interposed by the defendant as a defense to that action. It has been held that the defendant in a quiet title action cannot set up title in a stranger as a defense. However, it has also been held that a defendant in a quiet title case may use any imperfection in the title of the claimant and may defeat the action by proving a subsisting outstanding legal title in a third person with whom defendant is not connected. Furthermore, a defendant in such an action may resist a decree quieting title by showing that the plaintiff is without title. Wow. Clean hands doctrine. All right, and let's see here. Section 46, statute of limitations. And this gets into statutory uh, limiting commensurate actions not applicable to a set aside avoided judgment as a client on title. Not governed by statutory provision that applies to proceedings seeking relief on the ground of fraud. So there's a lot of intricacies when we get down to that and statutory limitations. Yeah, for defense. 
Uh, she says defense. So caution, lapse of time alone does not bar a suit to quiet title. Thus, a mere delay in enforcing a right is not in itself sufficient to support finding of latches if the delay is for a period of less than that fixed by the statute of limitations. All right. So estoppel as defense to quiet title action. All right, and this will be our last one for tonight. The defense of estoppel may be invoked against the complainant in an action to quiet title or remove a cloud on title. Equitable estoppel arises when a property owner stands by without objection while opposing party asserts an ownership interest in the property and incurs expense in reliance on that belief. The property owner's neglect to insist upon a right results in an estoppel only when the neglect is such that it would convey a message to a reasonable person that the neglectful party would not in the future pursue the legal right in question. Observation, because a property owner's action to quiet title seeks to defend the owner's title, the defense of estoppel is also available to him or her. Nice. All right, so that's a good one to end on. And, of course, there's lots more in this because this is American jurisprudence, and this goes on for quite a while. we got the clean hands and superior right or equity as conditions to quieting title. All right, this is short. Let's end with this. To be entitled to relief, the complainant must come into court with clean hands and must establish a superior right or equity. In determining the applicability of the clean hands doctrine, it is the moral intent of the party seeking relief and not the actual injury done that is controlling. Intentionally soiled hands cannot invoke the jurisdiction of a court of equity. Beautiful. Nice words. That came from this 1963 case, it seems. Weiner versus Romley in Arizona. Very nice. Intentionally soiled hands cannot invoke the jurisdiction of a court of equity. So, the clean hands doctrine and superior right on equity as conditions to quieting title there. Nice sentiment to end on. And at that note, I think we could take a uh, break from this episode of American Jurisprudence, quieting title and adverse claims. So we've gone over some general definitions and understanding of what quieting title is and the ejection actions and the quiet title actions and the adverse claims and ways of defending against and bringing those about involving quiet title actions. And of course, this is all done to remove the clouds on title so that the title is indisputable and cleared for full action in commerce and the regular intercourse of the nation. As land is vital for the functioning of everything from uh, our personal liberties to commerce. So on that note, I want to thank everyone for coming and putting up with the uh, issues we had with a little bit of the stream breaking out there get that edited there up so we'll have it uh, looking good for the replay and again thank you all for coming and we'll see you all on the next one peace out